on the bell. Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Katie Greifeld. We're counting you down to the closing bell, here to help take us beyond the bell. It's a global simulcast with Carol Masser and Matt Miller. Welcome to our audiences across all of our Bloomberg platforms, television and radio originals, and our partnership with YouTube. Carol Masser, what? stocks pretty much right around where they were, I think, the last time we talked about yeah. an hour ago here. An AI-driven rally, but if you're not tied to AI or the chip space, there isn't a whole lot else moving higher. No, I'm looking at the Philadelphia Semiconductor uh, Index. It's up about 7% here. So that news out of NVIDIA has just lifted the whole space. But you know what I really want to know, Romain? You What's know that? what Matt and I really want to know? No. When you say beyond the bell or the bell and beyond, what is beyond the uh, bell? Well, first of all, Carol, if I told you that, then, you know, I don't know. I, you know, You'd who knows what, 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 what I have to do here. Um, it, it's kind of confidential, but I can tell you. It's wonderful. Okay. Oh, you're okay. missing out. The so maybe someday you'll share. I thought it just yeah. was the minutes after 4 o'clock. And you know, the interesting I, thing I'm is with you, Katie. when Bed Bath and Beyond goes bankrupt, it's just like 5 o'clock is beyond the bell. Beyond what? actually does not. I know. Beyond. See? Yeah. I did not know that. All right. Uh, you know Things what? I've been know. thinking, I'm thinking about Katie what? Greifeld today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's gr good that she's here because we cover ETFs together. Yeah. And we talk to a lot of times people who have equal weighted ETFs, which uh, right now equal weighting is interesting with no breadth in this market, as Romaine was talking about uh, the last couple of days. Um, we see the S&P 500 actually up 8% year to date. But if you look at the equal weighted S&P, it's down 1% year to date. So that just goes to show you how much these tech companies Companies like NVIDIA have driven up the broader index. All right, as we get the closing bell uh, here in New York, uh, interesting day here, and a day, of course, that's a bit bifurcated here because of sort of the lopsided nature uh, of what's been driving this market. Nevertheless, though, it is an up day here for most of the major indices. The S&P 500 is going to finish the day higher by about 36 points or nine-tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq higher by more than 200 points or 1.7 percent there. On a day, we should point out here, where we are seeing members of our military forces helping to ring in the bells over at the NYSC as Fleet Ooh. Week here uh, in New York City, a tradition, of course, that comes right around Memorial Day every year here. And, of course, always a reminder here of some of the men and women who help to keep this country safe and sound. A Dow Jones Industrial Average down about one-tenth of a percent on the day. And the Russell 2000, that's your laggard, down seven-tenths of a percent. Isn't this the first Fleet Week since the pandemic? Is it right? Is that right? I'm I mean, not sure that's right. But, okay. You know, All right. We'll have yeah. to check on that. TBD. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Uh, Romain giving us the closing numbers. And if you take a look at the split in terms of uh, those names gaining and those games uh, names losing some ground, 240 to the upside in the S&P 500, Katie, 295 to the downside for unchanged. All right, if you want to look at the gainers, the losers uh, and the gainers, you can take a look at the GRR function. I like to put SPXL1 index in there, but, uh, well, someone else likes to put SPX index L2, uh, as you can see, because now there are 24 groups. In any case, uh, we have semiconductor uh, makers and semiconductor equipment leading the way there. And at the bottom, you see telecoms uh, and energy. But it's really all about tech stocks, NVIDIA, and uh, the semiconductors, isn't it? Before we get uh, to the uh, individual movers uh, today, I do want to point out we are getting some earnings. Autodesk, the big software company, reporting earnings right now in line pretty much across the board here. 155, that's your EPS number, right on the nose of what the street was looking for. Net revenue. $1.27 billion, right on the nose of what the street was looking for. Your guidance for the year, it's standing by its previous guidance. Full year revenue, $5.36 billion to $5.46 billion. That was the guidance that it had before here, overall here, in line with market expectations. All right, still some earnings coming out. A few more to go, uh, and we'll break them down as they cross, certainly on this Thursday. But in the meantime, let's get to some of the individual gainers. Man, we can't talk about it enough today. NVIDIA, top in the S&P 500, top in the NASDAQ. 100 and if we pull up the boards uh, with a gain of about 24 percent here uh, to a record close I believe yep no doubt about it so it's the world's most valuable chip maker you know the news you broke it last night uh, our team here uh, that forecast uh, just hitting it out of the park here and really giving a lift to the overall uh, semiconductor space synopsis is another one that was uh, among the top in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 uh, it's a supplier of software
software used to design semiconductors. So it's right in the middle of all of this AI euphoria that's going on, heavy volume, and you had synopsis up about 10%. And then do you want to do that headline, uh, Romain, and then I'll come back? Uh, yeah, just real quickly. Sure. A look, of course, at the daily Treasury cash balance, a drop in the most recent day here. This is through the end of the day, Wednesday, $49.5 billion. That's effectively what the Treasury has on hand in order to pay our bills. That number on Tuesday was around $76.5 billion. These numbers do oscillate, of course, because of tax receipts uh, that the Treasury gets. But, of course, at $49 billion, uh, that's well below where it should be. And, of course, uh, raises a lot of questions here about that so-called X date and exactly when it is. Yeah, swings around, but certainly a low mark there uh, on that. Hey, just one more gainer for you, everybody, because we are waiting for Ulta Beauty to come out. Well, Elf Beauty came out, uh, and it was uh, quite a rally. That name up about 21% here, uh, reporting fourth quarter results, broadly topped analyst expectations. They also issued stronger than anticipated annual projections for sales and profits. So, Did you really, say Elf? Elf. Elf Beauty. Elf Beauty. Everyone wants to look like an elf. Let's oh. talk about the decliners, though, Matt. I'm really excited to talk to you about Dollar Tree, down about, what, 12% today. It, slashed its profit outlook. This is interesting. So it's a shift in demand to lower margin food, legal costs from a rat infestation at a warehouse, and an increase in shrink. That, of course, is an industry term. Oh, that includes rat infestation. Losses from theft. Yeah, I hate to see a lot of legal costs there. Snowflake also having a terrible day, down 16.5%. Disappointing sales forecast that suggests that many companies are trimming their spend on cloud software. That's not good news for Snowflake. And just really quickly, of course, America and Eagle down almost 12% as well. First quarter sales and gross margin actually were better than expected, but it's always about the guidance. And analysts here are saying that the guidance for the second quarter and the full year were softer, of course, driven by weaker quarter to date trends in May. Uh, just real quickly uh, here, uh, more earnings crossing the wire. Uh, this on Workday, the shares higher uh, by about 8% here in after hours trading here. It does look uh, like they beat on adjusted EPS. The dollar 31 street will, on average was looking for about a dollar 13 and revenue coming in at 1.68 billion, uh, slightly above street estimates. The big headline though here is Barbara Larson, the CFO over at Workday, stepping aside to spend, according to the press release, more time with her family. She had risen to that role just back in 2020. So she was only on the job as a CFO for a little more than a year. A new CFO has already been uh, named here. And I just want to double double check a uh, Zane Rowe uh, being elevated to the CFO position. All right. Uh, oh, go ahead. You want to do yields? Uh, yeah, we, we just real quickly, we should point out. I mean, I mentioned this earlier, four or five right now on a two-year yield. That's 16 basis points and where we were 24 hours ago. Actually, 16 basis points more than where we were maybe just about four or five hours ago here. So a lot of activity right now, Carol, in the yield space. All right, got it. That is the yield space. Thank you. And let's get to Ulta Beauty. As I mentioned, Elfa was out earlier. Uh, Ulta Beauty uh, crossing in the after hours, and the stock's down about 11% here. Uh, company says uh, fiscal year net sales. Sales, 11 to 11.1 billion had seen 10.95 to 11.05 billion so that looks pretty much in line first quarter comp sales though that was a beat 9.3 percent compared to the estimate of 8.85 percent first quarter net sales pretty much in line 2.6 billion the estimate was 2.62 and also talking about operating margin of 14 and a half percent to 14.8 had seen 14.7 to 15 percent so a little bit of a range but you're seeing that stock down about nine percent katie here in the aftermarket let's also talk about rh because we are getting numbers from that company as well first quarter net revenue came in at about 739 million dollars the estimate had been for $726.8 million, so a little bit softer there. The first quarter adjusted EPS, $2.21. The estimate had been for $2.11, so a little bit of a beat there. You can see shares lower by about 1% right now. And here's the important part, RHC's fiscal year revenue at about $3 billion to $3.1 billion. It had seen that at about $2.9 billion to $3.1 billion, so narrowing that range a little bit there. Take a look at uh, Marvell. Um, you know, being that chips are it, the it thing right now, uh, Marvell is having a pretty darn good uh, time in the aftermarket. The company came out with second quarter adjusted gross margin about 60 to 61 percent. That's in line um, with the estimate. The EPS was a loss of 16 cents. Um, and, and it looks like uh, that's below a bigger loss than had been expected. Mm. Um, the net revenue that they see, the forecast, which I guess is the key, right? 1.3 billion um, plus or minus 5%. Anyway, the shares are up 13% in the aftermarket.
Yeah, so quite a, quite a big bump. Uh, it feels like everything we touch in the chip space uh, or anything connected, uh, we certainly see Except for Intel. move to the upside. Except, Except for little bitty <laughs> Intel. It's not easy being Intel right now. The gains now. in NVIDIA today were twice Intel's entire market cap. Yeah. That's perspective you for you. All right. Well, time will tell who ultimately wins, right? Because we know Intel's certainly trying to right the ship there. All right, guys, that is a wrap on this Thursday. Our cross-platform coverage, a little bit of earnings for you as well. Our cross-platform on radio, TV, YouTube, and, of course, Bloomberg Originals. The team will see you again, same time, same place, tomorrow.